I'm now here with uh, one of our associate uh, executive directors, Brad Andrus. Hello, Brad. Hello, good to see you. Same, likewise. Yeah. And uh, one of our resident guests, uh, Bob, let me get it, oh, Burchard. And Bob, you are in charge of, or maybe interested in some of our environmental um, effort here at Green Spring. Yes. Um, to make us greener than than green. And you're wearing a green jacket. Yes. You didn't get that playing golf, <laughs> did you? I did I not. <laughs> okay. I thought I better yeah. ask. Well, anyway, welcome to both of you. And I actually, Brad, you're kind of going to run this segment. Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, we have this initiative, you know, here at Green Spring around um, the seven dimensions of health or wellness. And, you know, what this uh, topic of this month is environmental wellness. And so when I thought about environmental wellness, what does that you know, really mean? Well, we all grew up in a different environment and that affected our health you know, mm -hmm. as we were growing up. Um, there are certain things that we you know, do each and every day that affect our environmental you know, health. And so uh, when I found out about uh, Bob Richard's a book on greening green spring and you know Bob was a professor of biological sciences at uh, University of Maryland Baltimore County I thought what a great opportunity to bring you on to talk about environmental wellness and also touch on some tips for conserving you know energy and materials and resources and as I read through here there was some really interesting things that you and I and others could do each and every day to you know be environmentally friendly and so, um, for instance, you know, one of the things is where do we keep our, you know, thermostats in the summer and where do we keep our thermostats in the winter time uh, in order to best conserve energy? And so that's one of the things that you had talked about in your, in your booklet. Correct. So, so uh, you're an, on. I'm on. <laughs> so uh, I use myself as an, an example. I, th this may be a little extreme for some of you, <laughs> but uh, in the summer I keep my thermostat at 80. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's right, keep it at 80. Uh, and in the off season, the winter time, I keep it 65, something mm -hmm. like that. That may, that probably doesn't appeal to some of you. but That, low, um, that second one doesn't appeal yeah. to me, but the first one, actually, I have to do. Well, <laughs> people could dress for the weather. That's true. So there's really no, as, as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason to have, uh, mul uh, there, there is a reason to have multiple layers of clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So you just dress accordingly. I keep a shawl next to my chair That's that right. I can put around me. And, you know, having, you know, 13-year-old twin girls in my house, 65, probably wouldn't go over well, but maybe 68, you know, maybe going a little little lower than we normally would, that would really help to reduce the carbon footprint. Exactly. Um, so. but Bob, do you, do you uh, in your writing, do you have uh, statistics about the, uh, the differences and how just changing something this many degrees causes this uh, effect. Um, do you spell that out at all? For those of us who are interested in statistics, <laughs> uh, it's not, not very interesting. I mean, the, the whole the, my point is that we can do better in terms of the the long term view of our future, g given our our impact on the environment, which is right. not is has been negative, really quite negative, yeah. and we're in serious trouble. Uh, I think there's there still are people out there who don't accept the scientific understanding of climate change. That's but, right. uh, the fact is it's going on and at a very rapid pace. And uh, I, I, w w people have suggested that what we have to do is start thinking about a World War II-like preparation to n not fight uh, the Nazis, but uh, fighting the change in our in, in, in our environment. Mm -hmm. So in um, you know Bob's booklet there are all kinds of you know analysis and numbers and graphs and so um, you know that might be something yeah, that, that if would you're be interested in that. Yeah very good. Um, you know some of the other things you know when you're grocery shopping for example uh, one of the things uh, that you said are 
Um, you know, we have recycling, you know, bags and we can turn our recycling bags into the store or not use plastic bags at all. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that from a grocery shopping standpoint that you would suggest to all of us? Well, one of my favorites is uh, bottled water. Mm -hmm. And so I, in the booklet, I talk about Fiji water. Uh, so this is water that is bottled in the Pacific Islands, Fiji. Uh, that means it has to be transported uh, the 7,000 some odd miles to get to uh, our community here from uh, over that distance. Mm -hmm. uh, why do that when we have a perfectly good and healthy uh, water supply system provided by Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. And the water that comes out of our the local reservoir that supports our, the system uh, is clean mm -hmm. by multiple measures. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea of hauling that, that material, heavy, water is heavy, mm -hmm. uh, 7,000 miles when you can just turn use your, your tap and on. turn the faucet on. <laughs> yeah. I, if I, can I blush on the air? <laughs> because I'm guilty of that yeah. uh, uh, in many ways of the bottled water. Well, speaking of water, um, you know, another way to conserve, you know, energy is in your refrigerator and freezer. You mentioned something to the effect of having capped plastic two quart bottles um, of frozen water in the freezer. You don't have to put water in it. Okay. It's just having the bottles capped so that you know that if you open the freezer on a cold day, you feel mm -hmm. air falling, That's cold right. air falling from That's the freezer. Right. So it's, it's basically emptying out the freezer mm -hmm. and uh, that, that cold uh, has to be restored. Then it has to be restored. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So if you immobilize the air in the freezer, that, that immobilized water stays in it rather than falling out on your feet. Good heavens. Yeah, it seems like a now simple who thing, would know right? That? <laughs> I mean, seriously, this yeah. is this is interesting. It is. And as I was reading through, there were, you know, so many things like uh, even personal hygiene. Talk about the uh, the navy shower. Okay, the navy shower. The navy shower. <laughs> How many seconds did you have to shower? Right. Right. Well, a navy shower is short by definition because <laughs> yeah. there is not a lot of fresh water carried right. by a, a ship. So, uh the Navy does, as I understand it, uh, require their uh, staff members to use water sparingly, hot water particularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, it should be short. Mm -hmm. So I think I've described it as a, was it a, a two minute, two minute shower as yeah. a maximum. I'm aware that there are many women in particular, but men as well. Uh, that is not appealing to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe, maybe five minutes. I don't. The two minute. I have to work my way towards that. I can. I can do five <laughs> minutes and no problem. But uh, okay. if I don't well, wash five my minutes if is I good. don't wash my hair, if, I if you, that's right. right. That that it is painful given you know how. <laughs> I mean, we use water li luxuriously. We do. And it all has to be heated somewhere, yeah. and um, so it's e easy enough to. Wet down, turn the water off, uh, soap up or shampoo up, mm -hmm. then turn the water off, rinse off, and uh, the rest of the way. Just mm -hmm. and it can it can be done. Well, I do I I do one little conservative thing. Okay. I um, due to a neighbor talking to me about it. When I'm brushing my teeth, I don't leave the water Good running. running. I, yes. I turn it yeah. off and on. Um, it Absolutely. seems like that wouldn't be much water, but I'm sure it is. Well, it adds up when you've yeah. got it, millions it of people. Add up. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, very good. Well, speaking so of what other, what yeah, other speaking thing? of water, um, one of the things I didn't think about was you know when we do laundry, you know using cold water, um, you mm -hmm. know, and that yeah. there are even um, you know detergents out there that are kind of made specifically for, for yeah, cold yeah, water right. washing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I use cold water. Um, I use cold water because it preserves the clothing better. Even, yeah, <laughs> which is once again another environmentally, 
you know, friendly I mean, thing to do. I mean, unless something were really like dirty, because yeah. I washed and wiped the balcony down or something, and then I might use uh, warm water. But yeah. It's a mindset, isn't it? When you said that yeah. in the beginning, changing your mind, and mm -hmm. it's it, you have to start the thinking process before any of this. It's yeah. going to happen. If it I mean, becomes routine, then it's not out of the ordinary, right? So, yeah. yeah. So, what what other ideas do you have there that we could do? Sixty or more. <laughs> Sixty or more. We have three minutes. Yeah. What can you anyway, do in three minutes? <laughs> well, I, 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 we were just talking before about using use, using hot water as an energy uh, mm -hmm. uh, store. So, you cook a, a pot of spaghetti. What do you do with the water when the spaghetti is done? Throw it out. Throw it out. So here you're throwing heated water in the winter. No, not, not, this is not a summer issue. Mm -hmm. you, you may as well save that water and use it as a heating source for your home rather than letting the hot water drain down into the sewer system below mm -hmm. and it's gone, it can't be captured. Mm -hmm. So why not let t pour the water into a bucket or allowed to sit in a sink with a stopper closed yeah. and use that as a heat source. I see, because that does generate heat. It is, it's heat already captured. And yeah, one time when I lived uh, somewhere else, they had this big restriction on use. You couldn't water your plants and you couldn't wash your car, blah, right. blah, blah. And so I remember what I, one of the suggestions somebody had, whenever I took a shower, I, I locked the drain and then, because I had a garden, I had a little garden yeah. of flowers, not food, but flowers. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, oh, I want to keep my flowers alive. And they put this into implementation in the middle of the summer. My flowers are all out there, little garden. And so I was you saving that, that water, water yeah. out of you know, my showers. That's what I watered my plants. Now it was a pain in the neck to, to get <laughs> tote the, all that get water, the bucket right, and yeah. tote it out across the living room, and you know. But anyway, yeah. I bet it was a, a way I did it then. Um, but until it's drawn to our attention, yeah. uh, Bob, and and it, it's not you know we don't think about it. We don't, and I think we have to be very mindful of the impact of not doing these things. Again, I, I, early on I said uh, people who are, are concerned about it are looking for ways of making a drastic change mm -hmm. in the way we mm -hmm. run our world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not a fun, fun and games. The, the projections, we're talking about animal species dying Mm -hmm. uh, becoming extinct. Of course. Uh, there have been periodic uh, pieces in the post about it. Especially so up in the Arctic and Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, some of the things that we're doing here at Greenspring, you know, to reduce our carbon footprint or, you know, uh, things like LED lighting, you know, mm -hmm. we're now moving right. towards that. Right. Um, that's, a, you know, big savings. Uh, composting, recycling, yeah. not using styrofoam, I'm going to paper products. I'm very upset that the county is not taking some of our number five yeah. things yeah. that we get in the dining rooms to carry on our food. Right. I at least have once or twice carried down a container that I, I put it in <coughs> from the lunch table so mm -hmm. that I could at least put that in the dishwasher. Sure. I don't throw it away, but I hate that. Yeah. Now it seems very bad. Right. Okay. Listen, okay. I'm getting more. Cute. We could go on forever. We're I am getting a lot of cues, <laughs> but I'm okay. Wrapping up. Thank you very much. And are we going to see this booklet you're doing? Well, that's uh, further discussion. Yeah. Further discussions. Yes. That, well, that's the idea. At least well, it I've, was. I, for one, would love to see it. <laughs> yeah. And I know our residents would enjoy yeah. um, that.